Good early morning to you. I thought that maybe today would be a good time for a little ramble and just to kind of chat it out. Make you feel a little better. Got my lovely brush. And I thought that maybe I could talk about what's been going on since I've returned. <laughs> the vacation was very pleasant. It was interesting. I had, oops. I had been to Canada, but only to that music festival, and that's in the middle of the forest, so you can't really say that you've seen Canada if that's all you've seen. But this time, we went up and we stayed in Vancouver for almost a week. tried a lot of the different things they have to see there. We toured around Stanley Park on bikes and that was very beautiful. And I was surprised how close all that beauty was right smack to downtown. I enjoyed that Vancouver was they seem to be very big on recycling. I thought that was cool. Most, or at least many of the businesses had recycle bins. Like it was very common to see a recycling receptacle just next to a trash can. And you don't always see that here. And I think it was cool that the businesses were doing that as well. The other thing that I really appreciated about Vancouver is that there was a lot, there were a lot of vegan restaurants. I thought that was really cool. We tried many of them. Mostly me. I'm the only one of this household that eats a vegan diet. I don't call myself a vegan, but that's a different issue. But their restaurant's very good. There was this one restaurant that I thought was particularly inspiring called the Zend conscious lounge and I liked this restaurant because it was a non-profit organization all of the funds that they received from their food and their food was a little bit I mean I guess we were in Canada too so our money was worth more you know, from America but their food was about 14 or 15 Canadian dollars a dish. So, I mean, it's not expensive in the sense it's not something you would think twice about. But it is a standard priced restaurant. And they were pretty fancy too. Like, they, all of their food was served very professionally and it was all plant based, all vegan stuff. I think all of it was gluten-free, too. Um, but all of the profits that they made from the restaurant would either go to pay the staff or to some charitable organization. And I don't remember which one. <laughs> but I didn't really care. I was just happy that that was the case. The 
music festival was pretty fun too. I didn't quite go all out as I did last year and do a bunch of crazy things. Shambhala is, as one person has described it to me before, the place where you can be yourself as much as you want and everyone's going to support you in doing so. And so last year I went all out and I did a bunch of crazy things. Um, I guess not that crazy. What did I do last year? Um, I <laughs> I baked a bunch of fortune cookies with my mom before I went as I was passing through there down to the fest towards the festival, and we made a bunch of fortune cookies, and then I had some pure capsaicin, and it was a liquid. And I would take this and I put one to three drops in one third of the fortune cookies. And I wrote all the fortunes myself and they were just a bunch of absurd things. Like they weren't really that serious. But we mixed all the cookies together. And so not only did you get a crazy fortune, but there was a one in three chance that you were gonna have a pretty spicy cookie. <laughs> and of course I told people this I told people about the game and I didn't just be like hey you want a fortune cookie and then watch as they suffer one in three of them anyway no no I told them of the gamble and those that partook were the ones that agreed to the chance I have a lot of reactions to them. Actually, many people didn't find them spicy, which was kind of nice. But I guess many of them did. <laughs> and I don't know, it was a lot of fun. People really enjoyed it. They thought it was a unique idea. I wanted people to ask me about them. I carried around a little reusable shopping bag that I have for groceries and I, you couldn't see what was in it when I was walking around so I <laughs> I wanted people to stop me as I was walking around with it so I taped a piece of paper to it that said like top secret don't uh, what did I write on it I think I wrote top secret I don't remember if I wrote anything else though, but I wanted to get people's attention and have them be like, oh, what's in that bag? But no one did. <laughs> so I had to start asking people, which was fine, just a little bit less exciting. Um, then Last year, I also took, I wore a lot of white clothes previously, and by a lot I mean exclusively white clothes. I liked that all of my clothes were the same, and I didn't have to think about what I wanted to wear, I didn't really care, it was all this pure, like, I can look, I'm just me without having to worry about my clothing. Um, so last year I brought some brand new, a brand new white shirt and some brand new white pants. And I had people, I also brought a bag of, I think 20 color, various colors of permanent markers. And I had people draw all over me whatever they wanted. And people drew a lot of interesting things. So 
some people were very talented artists. I was very pleased with that. I still have those clothes. I don't really know what to do with them. I'm not very sentimental in the sense that I like to keep things for sentimental value. I'm usually satisfied with just the memories. But at the same time, I don't just want to throw the clothes away. So, I don't know, they're just sitting in a bag in my closet right now. They're still pretty dirty too. I figured if I wash them, it might ruin the, some of the drawings. So I haven't washed them, but I don't wear them, so it's not much of an issue. And then I also dragged around a notebook last year and had people write whatever they wanted into it. And that was fun. Last year I went to the festival by myself, and so I was basically spending the entirety of my time talking to strangers and just putting myself out there. Oh, also last year I had a little toy, a little shock ball. Um, if you haven't seen those, it's just a little plastic ball with little notes around the surface of it. And at random, inter random intervals, once it's turned on, it'll send out a little electric shock. Not really much to hurt you or to do anything bad, just to kind of give you a little buzz. And it's pretty startling if you don't expect it or you haven't felt it before. And <laughs> I was trolling people with that. I stood at um, in this camp, and it was a pretty. It's kind of in the center of the whole thing, so people would pass by it a lot, and people would walk by, and I'd be tossing it up and down, and then I'd just toss it to them, <laughs> and people would freak out because they didn't know what it was and then they'd see the little lightning bolts on it and it says like warning on it or something like that and so they'd be like oh my god what's this gonna do <laughs> and they'd get all nervous and lots of people would <laughs> lots of people would hand it back or pass it to their friend or just get it off their hands but some people were curious about it and would let it shock them some people would drop them immediately when I tossed it to them. <laughs> Lots of people dropped it. It was very fun though. Like no one was really angry at me. There was a lot of laughter and joy around it. It did end up breaking though. I thought that the battery just, just died. But after being dropped on the ground for like 50 times, I think it just broke. Lots of people say that that happens to them. So it's not that far-fetched. I met one guy last year who was a contact juggler and he took the shock ball and <laughs> he was doing contact juggling with it and he was rolling it all over him and like all over his body across his chest and stuff and it would shock him and it was like almost erotic for him. <laughs> He was so into it. He's like, oh my god, this thing is amazing. <laughs> Where did you get this treasure? <laughs> I need one of these for myself. And so he wrote down his email. And I sent him the company where I bought mine from. <laughs> oh my, the people you meet. But this year, or last year, like I said, I was by myself, and 
it's it was pretty tiring actually I ended up leaving a little bit early for a few reasons one being it was the only way that I'd get to see my dad before I had to go back to Tucson um, just the way the scheduling worked out him and my schedule are usually his and my schedule are usually pretty opposite so I left a day early to see him I also left because the artist that I really really wanted to see at Shambhala ended up canceling because I guess some family matter came up for him too um and then what else oh also I was just really burnt out I don't know if it's obvious or not and maybe I've said this before in some other video but I'm really not a social person and not meaning that I have social anxiety or anything like that because I generally don't um, not even meaning that I'm antisocial because I feel like that suggests that I'm pushing it away or that I am somehow resistant to it but I'm not I enjoy people I like hearing their stories and chatting with them but generally I don't seek very much social experience and I'm fine with this and by don't seek very much I mean I pretty much don't seek any I feel like a bit of an isolator most of the time but I'm content on my own. Oh, <laughs> but why I mentioned that was because last year in going to the festival by myself, I basically had no choice but to be meeting just hundreds of people all the time. I was just always around strangers. And that really burned me out, holy cow. Going from such little social activity to this buzzing <laughs> two or three days of like nothing but social activity. That was, that was pretty challenging. It was fun at first. And there's no other place that I'd rather meet people as much as Shambhala. But after so much constant time of doing that I was a little burned out <laughs> let's see I think the highlight of this festival was on Sunday afternoon Actually, it was about Sunday at noon, maybe. We were walking around the main square of the festival, and there were these group of girls that had hula hoops, and they had extras, and it was sort of like a very... Uh, not impromptu. Um, what's the word? This is a very relaxed... Uh, man, there's a word that I'm not, that I'm blanking on. Uh, sort of like unprofessional. It's, I think it's like an M word or in. <laughs> it's very casual hula hooping class. And they had an extra hula hoops and anyone could come join and they would teach you tricks if you wanted to learn anything fancy and so we hula hooped with them for a little bit <laughs> I think 
have the garbage truck. But I don't know why it's here. I don't think the garbage is until tomorrow, Tuesday. Here, I'll have I think that made it worse, actually. <laughs> A single beep. Hmm. Uh, I don't know why that's going on. So we really hooped with these girls for a little bit, and then we, then it started to rain, and it was just a light sprinkle at first, so we kept going, but as it started to get heavier, we decided that we didn't really want to loop in the rain, and we would rather put on our ponchos, so we did that, we went over under a tree, and put on our ponchos, and then off a little bit in the distance, we hear a flute, and our ears prick up, sort of like a deer, <laughs> and we look over, and running in the middle of this clearing of trees is this completely naked man playing the flute. And he's like a forest sprite. <laughs> and he's running around and he's dancing around naked in the rain playing the flute. And he was very, very good at the flute. And he looked, it was just magical. <laughs> like this was something that I don't think we would ever see anywhere else. And it was such a... It's just one of those moments that you might not ever forget. <laughs> I think we took a picture of him too. We had this little disposable camera. And we were really bad at taking pictures because we just wouldn't think about it. But we took some. And we still haven't developed the film yet. I think there's still three pictures on it. We didn't take them all. <laughs> There's a lot to see at this festival, so we're usually immersed in whatever it was that was going on. But I want to talk a little bit about my life since I've come back. Because things are evolving in a way that I didn't anticipate. I guess I'll whisper it for a minute. I'd rather... Eh, it doesn't matter. So... I... I got back. And... Started resuming my life as normal. I went back to work a little bit. But something... I think once 
so I have this, this tug of war between thinking that I won't find a better job, being afraid that the next job I get isn't going to be as either as good for me or as pleasant. So it's kind of, that's a little bit of a fear, I guess. While at the same time still being very unsatisfied with where I'm currently at. And I've been resisting beating myself up about it, so to speak. Right now I'm just kind of trusting the moment of what's going on where I feel led to. So I haven't done anything just yet. I'm trying to take a little bit more time off so I can work less hours. Because I think that if I'm working less, it'll be a little better. I just have to be careful to make sure I'm earning enough money to contribute my part of the household. Living on, like providing for my own needs is very, very easy. I'm, <laughs> I'm easy to please, easy to satiate. This is kind of going on with, or in conjunction with, a very big spiritual, I don't know if awakening is an appropriate word, but just a strong sense of spiritual growth. And perhaps the two are correlated. But I'm still figuring things out. I've also been having <laughs> detoxification very, very hard. And that, of course, exacerbates whatever else is going on in my life. So it's been a challenging time, for sure. But I'm feeling optimistic still. Some days are harder than others. But some days I'll wake up with such an intense and strong, renewed sense of vigor and light in me. Just the feeling that everything will be okay.
waking up. You don't have to. <laughs> your life is under your domain, just like me and mine. Thanks for letting me chat. You know I appreciate our time together. Even if I get a little distracted sometimes. I'll see you soon.